Hey guys, we are on the deck. It's the first week of March and I'm still pruning. And so today I'm going to be pruning my, is it the Draper? Yeah, it's called the Draper Blueberry. But before I start trimming, I want to show you something interesting. I have never seen a praying mantis sack. And this is what we're looking at. And praying mantises are good little animals to have. Um, you know, they eat your aphids, they eat the flies, they eat mosquitoes. As they get larger, I know that, um, you know, I, I've heard and read that they will eat hummingbirds even and fish. And I've only seen that on a YouTube video. Um, but uh, uh, bees, uh, the butterflies, I've yet to see. The good news about these um, little praying mantis, if you see them somewhere where you don't like them, you can relocate them. If I didn't want this sack here, I could cut this branch off, which I'm not going to do. And... I could put it in another area in the crotch of a tree off of the ground because ants will eat the sack up and let them hatch from there. So we'll if they start hatching and we see the babies, I'll make certain I show you, but that's pretty cool. So today with any pruning of any deciduous shrub or tree, you want to remove the dead, the diseased, and anything that's crossing, dead, diseased, damaged, um, and crossing. So I can see right now, right down in here, anything coming out from inside, we're going to cut completely off because we want to keep this open on the inside. I'm just using my hand pruners. And they can break off too. So we'll get this all cleaned out. That has a little growth. That has a little bud on it. You want to search around. I've, you know, with a small little blueberry bush like this, and the draper is made for pots, it's easy to maintain. Everything is looking pretty good. Here's a, here's a dead branch right here. Taking it off. Another dead one right. That's crossing. This is crossing. It's not dead, but I'm taking, I want this branch. I'm taking this one off. Um... Look at this. There's a little berry left there. Take that off. Anything crossing. I've done pretty well about keeping things on this little shrub cleaned up. Another dead. You can hear how crunchy they are. So this is the time to do it. Here's something crossing over this branch. It's coming right off. Clean that off. Oh, that wasn't the one I wanted, but it's it'll be all right. Right here is a good example. I'm gonna t I'm gonna keep this branch, and take this one. And that may I was studying this before we came out. Here's a dead down here. So same here. I'm gonna take this one out because it's gonna cross. But that's that's how easy it is. You just have to come out, take a look. That one needs to come. And you can see it's starting to bud. I'm gonna give it a week or two before I fertilize it. And it loves acid, acid, acid fertilizer. So something like holly tone or something for azaleas. That's one job off the list. We're gonna go down. I'm going to uncover the pond today too and then show you how I edge. It's time to get weeding. How I edge the edge of the garden, do the first third of my big perennial bed. Uh, I've mentioned before that I do divide my gardens into six now seven areas. Let me get these out of the way so I don't trip over it or, and no one does. But the pond is thawed out and I want to get this uncovered. And I just use this little netting to cover. It's all about just keeping these big leaves out from the water's edge. So we'll pull these all off and it should all come into itself and then I'll shake the leaves off of it. Let's get up here to where the Buddha should be. There we go. We had fish years and years ago. And uh, 
because we get so much runoff and we have had floodwaters, we decided not to put fish back in. They end up in the West Fork. And I find this is just easy. It's coming right off. There we go. Little by little. This is definitely a sign of spring. So I'm going to lay this out in the yard, let the leaves dry off in the sun, and we'll pack all that away for next fall. I'm going to plug it in and see if it starts. It's possible because the pump itself you can see the line, it goes up into here, and I'm not sure if that water's frozen up in there or not, but we'll find out. Well, look at that. I love it. I'll come back and rearrange the rocks. Uh, last year we cleaned out the whole pond and restacked the rock, uh, put in a new pump. But this is a really easy water feature to have. We used a liner, um, excuse me, just dug a hole. We bought, we didn't use a preform, and we just bought a liner. We've collected stones all of our lives. We just came from a rock hunt this past weekend. And I love how now, you know, it was once stacked perfectly straight. And now the rocks have started to move in as they should. And I love it. I don't want it to look uh, contrived or I don't know what the word is. Anyhow, and the Pacassandra looks beautiful climbing over it. Manufactured, that's the word you're looking for. Manufactured is the word. I don't like manufactured looks. At least this is more of a cottage garden. If I had um more of a contemporary garden the inside the house is contemporary but the garden is definitely more cottage style so that is that wasn't a hard job and i'm so glad the water is running the next thing we're going to do let me get my bucket i i've had people ask me how i edge my garden and i used this it's called a uh mm, i call it my uh little uh, weeding tool uh, you use in the garden to dig rows. There's an actual word for it, this pointy hoe, and uh, a worn hoe. <laughs> Read the tag, a worn hoe. So I love a worn hoe because it gets in here. Look how, e of course the soil is really easy. I don't need this, but I just want to, I'm going to collect all these little weeds. like this. I rake, I go with my little worn hoe, get them off the top. And let me go ahead, get this little spot. This is the time of year to do it. This zoysia grass, this, this is zoysia grass. Uh, I didn't plant it. Birds must have dropped droppings. Oh, Anna and Helen, our neighbors, I guess they planted it. And uh, I like it. It's just, it doesn't, it stays brown in the winter, then it greens up in the summer, and it has a lovely texture. It's just that it creeps into your garden, so you really have to stay on top of it um, and keep it out of the edges of your borders. It's not a big job, truly, but. Would I plant zoysia? No, not for me. But you can only fight things so long. So then I will go through, rake out the leaves, and not the leaves, rake out the weeds, just like this. Along my border. And Clean that up just like that. 
And then I like to always see the soil loosened, even around the, the edges. That way, if any of my edging plants want to creep further into this little trough that I've made, I like to know the soil is loosened. And I will go and do this through the rest of the, the edge of the garden. The other thing I do right now is, and I know I brought my hand pruners down. I want to cut off the seed of autumn joy. Yep, because it is time. And it breaks right off. And these little things that we're doing right now, the sound of the water, the cleaning off of the Sedum Autumn Joy. are just sounds of new growth. Looks so nice. We did have a snow flurry last night around seven. <laughs> and then 70 degree tomorrow and Sunday. That's why it's confusing for us gardeners to not do a whole lot. We have to do don't, or whatever that little saying was. I didn't repeat it five times. <laughs> Look how nice the edge is getting. And down here too, I'm going to give this probably a week for things to warm up before I put some of my uh, garden tone out here in the garden around the perennial bed. Ah, nice. I have weeded all winter. Whenever I could get out on a good day, because there are just some weeds that live all year round. Now, like if I wanted to, here's a little plug of some sedum that I could stick somewhere else and start a nice new plant, nice new roots. For now, I'll stick it here and make a decision where I might want to put that. But I love the sedum autumn joy. It stands up and in the fall, it's such a pretty color. So I always wait to cut back my autumn ferns until I see some new growth. I know they look a little wimpy, but for, for me, that's just how I do it. That's the telltale sign that it's time to undo. That looks like I've had a cat in here digging a hole. We found a mouse up on the porch, so or a mole. But otherwise, today's a... Oh, I see... Like right in here. Wild onions. I shouldn't use my tool, but I didn't bring my... This is my nemesis. Look at all those little wild onions. I can't... I don't... That's a compost. I, no, this doesn't go in the compost. The weeds don't go in the compost. No, good, thank you. Yeah, you don't put wild onions in the compost. I'm sure there's a use for them. I just won't be using them. But when I look like in the second part of the perennial bed, I'm not seeing a lot of weeds either. I will pull these out. These come right out of my edging right here. But that's how easy it is. Get out now and it's easy. So I'm going to continue today uh, removing the Sedum Autumn Joy. You can see it's time to cut them back and uh, do my borders and wait for another sunny day to get out and do some fertilization. So you've been watching Gardening on the West work. Looking beautiful. Zone 6, Western West Virginia, the first week of March. 
We'll see you at the next time. Bye. Thanks for watching.